도시가 지구 환경에 미치는 영향은 절대적이라고 할수 있습니다. Cities consume enormous amounts of energy and pollute the air. A bleak future awaits unless we change our cities. To achieve a sustainable future, cities are embracing change. And buildings, the dwelling places of humans, lay at the heart of a city wave of the future and if you're not building a sustainable building you're building a building that's obsolete everyone to either live or work in a green building within a generation so we have a lot of work to do to make that happen to make sure that either where you live or you work uh, that either one of those places is a is a green building Finding ways for humans to coexist with the environment is a key strategy for a city's survival. Green projects are changing the way we live. That's why green buildings are the future of cities. Majora Carter has been a New York-based environmental activist for 10 years. She's been invited to a special event today. She heads to a new park in Bronx, New York. See, this is what I saw the first time when I came here, um, when I saw the river. Oh, this is a beautiful photo, Jane. But not too long ago, the Bronx River hardly attracted any visitors. You guys in the back, what are you stopping for? <laughs> Yeah! You're more than halfway! She's especially excited that a new park will open in her neighborhood, where she was born and raised. She also found her pet dog, Snuppy, near the Bronx River. The Bronx River lies near Harlem and used to be a haven for homeless people and stray dogs. It was also a crime-ridden area where drug dealers prowled the streets. However, the city of New York and citizens banded together to revive the Bronx River. Also, this concrete park will be unveiled to citizens for the first time today. 1895, the city took over, the land on both sides of West Farms Creek. The new bridge commissioner said, give me that key. This is Not only is Majora proud to see the way the Bronx River has changed for the better, but the residents are also overjoyed. Left Mrs. Titus lying in tears. In came the naughty official bridge tender. Goodbye, Mrs. Titus, after 22 years. because they said we're not going to have this monster had a big tongue and it, the tongue was a road and we said we're not going to let you put a road through here and we stood here on a cold day and this is a picture of my father he had hair back then that's my daddy right there and my mom my Yay! daddy is fighting that truck monster in this picture my husband who also had hair back then is was in this picture that was questionable. There were 10,000 tires, there were cars, there were squatters, and there were abandoned buildings, uh, wild dogs. It was just not a place that was safe and not a place that was accessible. The Bronx River area had many concrete plants until 1987. After the plant closings, the neighborhood began to deteriorate. Then citizens began lobbying the city to improve the river. Their requests were finally answered and a park was built. Very overwhelming. When, when I first got out here, these towers were like so decrepit and there was a, a lot of uh, uh, corrugated steel attached to these towers and they looked very dangerous. The concrete plant is still standing after being closed down 20 years ago. beginning of the uh, design process, uh, I understood that this area of the Bronx has the highest asthma rate. And so, you know, you have a lot of children here 
who suffer because of all the truck traffic in the area. The area is near a highway, which has heavy truck traffic. Diesel fumes from the trucks have harmed the health of residents. If the concrete plant were to be demolished, it would release large amounts of harmful substances, so the park's architect decided to leave the plant intact. Besides the work it has already done here, New York City plans to build more parks and clean up the rivers under its green project. We believe that one million new people will come to New York between now and 2030. To have a sustainable city, a green city, you have to do a lot of things. You have to make sure you have clean water, clean air, good parks, good mass transit. The city is implementing many projects to remake the city into a sustainable one. Times Square in New York has one of the worst traffic congestions in the city, but the situation has improved recently. Expanded sidewalks have replaced street roads between 42nd and 47th Avenue. The pedestrian-friendly place is now lined with cafes. These changes were made by Mayor Bloomberg, who wants to make New York an environmentally friendly city. And I guess, you know, it's, it's also a good thing that Bloomberg is doing this because it, it, gives, the, it gives the opportunity to actually inhabit the city, you know, the New Yorkers, tourists, you know, and more space for us to actually move around and live in. I guess I still see a lot of cars in the city, particularly in Manhattan, but, uh, you know, it's, I guess it's just step by step. New York City's Green Project is also changing the public transit system. You'll notice green NYC stickers on taxis almost everywhere in the city. What do the stickers stand for? I fixed this car. Uh huh. They give you green stickers. That means also. your Hybrid. reduce the. Uh air pollution or? Yes, exactly. That's, it? that's me, yeah. New York City produces more carbon emissions than any other city in the world. Under a goal to reduce emissions by more than 30%, the city unveiled the NYC 2030 project, which targets the city's buildings. New York City emits 38.2 million tons of carbon dioxide into the air every year, and two-thirds of it comes from buildings. New York's skyline is dotted with skyscrapers, but the city cannot transform itself into a green city unless it changes its buildings first. Uh, the DOB, the Department of Buildings, uh, is now being more strict in terms of its codes. They're going to audit buildings and actually go to buildings while they're in construction to make sure that the buildings are built the way they're designed. One, uh, in, in addition to complying with the law, one uh, important benefit is that uh, some cities will, will uh, speed up the process whereby you get your permit to build the building. So it's a very uh, shorter time and you save a lot of money if your building can be built more quickly. Thanks to policies that provide incentives to green buildings, along with tighter carbon emission standards, most new buildings under construction in New York City are environmentally friendly. Now, developers are racing to build the greenest building instead of the tallest ones. day it's it's a it's it's because not just because it's more energy efficient and therefore costs less 
to run. But also, uh, I believe there's a, a, a recognition now that people who build green buildings um, are on top of the newest technologies, and they are building good buildings. And so, in addition to the parts of the building that are green, it just means the whole building is probably a better building. It's a sign that they are a top quality builder, that they're building green. In late 2008, the Bank of America Tower was completed in the heart of Wall Street. This building received Platinum LEED certification from the U.S. Green Building Council for being an ecologically friendly building. The building itself uses natural resources as efficiently as it possibly can. We have our own 5 megawatt combined heat and power plant on site. So we make about two-thirds of the building's energy right, uh, right here. Uh, by making energy, electricity uh, on site, we can capture the waste heat and use that to heat the building, to heat the hot water for the building. The special glass panes on the 54-story building act as a gigantic curtain by deflecting light. They can also turn solar energy into electricity. The building reduces operating costs by generating its own energy. There are also other benefits derived from these technologies. People love working in this building. Um, if you ask anybody, um, they'll tell you that the air is so much fresher and cleaner. From uh, the perspective of a tenant, it's, it's very important that um, your workers uh, and, uh, are happy and productive. I mean, most companies uh, spend the majority of their money on their workers. They're their most valuable resource. So to have a workplace that keeps everybody happy and productive and comfortable is invaluable. The city of New York took a proactive role in spreading awareness of the efficiency and benefits of green buildings. This has led to the construction of more green buildings in the city. The city has been holding regular seminars on buildings, with experts giving talks on green technologies. I would say because of the large response, and it sold out our sessions, um, that people are more interested. We, we want to make them aware of the energy code and they want training in it. These city-sponsored forums allow people to learn about the latest eco-friendly building materials, regenerative technologies, and green building codes they need to follow when developing areas. Most of the participants in the seminar work in the field of architecture. There's some new requirements that are coming down the line. Uh, the New York City is really tightening its, its uh, uh, requirements for the energy performance of buildings. And so that uh, requires that architects have a better understanding of the interaction of their envelopes and their, their building designs with the mechanical systems that keep them cool. This seminar today was trying to help make it easier to figure out how to spend the money and utilize the money. The city did not stop at drawing up new building codes for green buildings. It went a step further by promoting the energy efficient benefits of green buildings and engaged developers and architects to adopt green technologies. Thanks to these efforts, the city is undergoing a transformation. Now the focus is on building a greener building than a taller one, which will help the city cast off its reputation as the world's top polluting city. It's a blueprint for a better and sustainable future. I think no matter what we do or don't do, New York, New York City is going to be changed after 2030. What I can hope is that we continue to invest resources in the right areas to change it for the better. Cities elsewhere are changing too. London is the largest city in Europe. In this city, which boasts a rich history, there is a strong movement to build green buildings that will make the city more competitive. London City Hall is referred to as a glass egg, and the building faces south. The glass windows are designed to allow natural air circulation throughout the building, and this reduces heating costs.
Osaka is the greenest city in Japan and features various kinds of green buildings that harness unique technologies. The organic building is located in downtown Osaka. You'll see plants hanging from the side of the building, but they offer more than pleasing aesthetics. The wastewater from the building is piped through the plant soil, which filters it naturally. Thus, the building is able to conserve water. Frankfurt is the financial center of Germany. The city announced plans to house all government departments and bureaus in green buildings to lead a green revolution within the city. World cities are embracing green building technologies. Ecologically friendly buildings make cities more competitive and sustainable for the future. <laughs> 아, 이제 아, 몇년 이내에 고갈될 거다라는 위기감이 상당히 팽배해 있습니다. 건물 부분에서 사용되는 에너지가 전 세계적으로 한 40% 정도 차지하고 있습니다. 아, 그래서 아, 이 에너지를 절감해야지만 화석연료 사용을 줄일 수가 있고 그리고 결국은 또 지구 온난화를 줄일 수 있기 때문에 For the past 50 years, we have been able to raise our standard of living by burning fossil fuels to create energy. As a result, we have released enormous amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Due to the rise in carbon dioxide levels, the Earth's atmosphere has grown thicker, trapping more levels of heat than before. This has accelerated global warming. Energy 아, 물질이 많이 배출이 되죠. From the day a building is constructed until it is demolished, it will consume vast amounts of energy. The Hearst Tower in Manhattan, New York, reduced its energy consumption for cooling and heating by 7%. And that translates into a reduction of 1,074 tons of carbon emissions. This number is equal to taking 214 cars off the streets. For more than 100 years, the construction industry developed new technologies to build tall skyscrapers. But now, the focus has shifted to building efficient green buildings. Former U.S. Vice President Al Gore made the case that green buildings could reduce greenhouse gases with minimal sacrifices and maximum economical gain. Last summer, this college campus in Seoul was mostly quiet during summer break. But one college lab has been a blur of activity for over a month. These students have been working on a project together all summer. They're preparing an entry for an eco-friendly architecture contest. The theme of the contest is building a green elementary school that can reduce energy use and also show children the importance of the environment. But eco-friendly buildings are a relatively new field. Due to the wide range of energy-saving technologies in use today, it's a challenge for the students to sift through mountains of information to find what they need.
After a month of preparations by the students, the eco-friendly building design contest was finally held. Entering its second year, the contest attracted 594 entries from 65 universities. Korea's greenhouse gases are increasing at a worrisome pace, so it's more important than ever to spread awareness of eco-friendly practices to students who will pursue careers in architecture. This contest brought together many creative ideas on how to construct a green building. The grand prize went to an entry that drew water from a nearby river to build a waterway within the school building. 학생들이 이렇게 친환경적인 녹지와 그리고 물을 어, 접하면서 학교 내부에서의 수업뿐만이 아니라 외부에서 자연을 가까이 하면서 수업을 느낄 수 있도록 저희가 어, 제안하였습니다. 다른 설계들보다 저희가 이렇게 실제적으로 친환경적인 것이 지속 가능한 건축을 하는 데 있어서 중요한 것인지 저희가 알게 되었고요. 처음엔 녹지나 그냥 태양광 정도 일반적인 상식을 갖고 있다가 좀더 세세하게 알수 있었다 이거죠. These students learned about new green technologies while working on their contest entry. However, green buildings are a relatively new field in Korea. But one person was interested in building eco-friendly homes 10 years ago. The Zero Energy House was built in Saldun, Gangwondo in the spring of 2009. Mr. E. Day Chul designed this home. He gets several visitors a day. More than 4,000 people have visited this home in the last year. It's a revelation for them to see a house that uses a heating and cooling system that does not rely on fossil fuels. Though it was 30 degrees Celsius outside, the rooms were quite cool. Befitting its name, the house uses no energy. But how does the house stay warm in the winter and cool in the summer without using any energy? Glass windows are on the side of the house that faces south. This brings in more sunlight. The large windows have wood curtains to trap heat in the winter. The use of heavy insulation can decrease airflow in the house, so a heat recovery air circulation device was installed. An air pipe is installed in the ground, where it is heated by geothermal energy and then resurfaces into the home. Meanwhile, another pipe is designed to extract air from the home. Using geothermal energy to power an air circulation system creates a home that is warm in the winter and cool in the summer without burning fossil fuels.
We visited Mr. E's home four months later in early winter. In Kangwondo, Saldun village is known for its harsh, cold winters. Though winter has not begun in other parts of the country, the temperature here has already fallen to minus 8 degrees Celsius. But how warm is it inside the home? The room temperature stands at 22.3 degrees Celsius. The only heater in the home is a fireplace. It looks like an ordinary fireplace, but can provide heat for more than 36 hours in one session. Mr. E has a BA in forestry and also worked as a park official. He began to take an interest in energy saving practices 10 years ago. He worried that the nation would face an energy crisis unless it changed its energy consumption habits. So he began studying energy saving techniques. He collected material related to energy efficiency on his trips abroad and read more than 1,000 books on the subject. With no background in architecture, Mr. E built his house through trial and error. He devoted six years to building a zero energy house suitable for Korea's climate. Knowing that changing our dwelling place is the only way to overcome a looming energy crisis, Mr. E became obsessed with the idea of building a house that had minimal impact on nature and relied on clean energy sources. Darmstadt is about an hour's drive from Frankfurt. This is where the K6 eco-friendly residential housing is located. The passive house movement began in Germany. Now there are more than 5,000 passive houses in the country like the K6 houses. More than 90 families live in the K6 complex, but it is just one section of the massive passive complex that will be completed in five years. Hello. Hello. Julian's family moved to the K6 complex in 2007 and has already spent two summers and one winter in their new home. Komisch, weil man ja sonst früher im Winter immer dicke Pullis und jetzt kann ich auch im Winter mit kurzen Arm laufen im Haus. The room temperature constantly stays between 23 and 24 degrees Celsius in any season. Room humidity is managed naturally at levels of 55 percent. Heizkosten haben wir nicht. Dadurch, dass wir die Lüftungsanlage haben, haben wir haben wir etwas höhere Stromkosten, weil die Lüftungsanlage mit Strom läuft. The family likes that they save money on heating, but what they like even more is that their son has caught fewer colds since living here. Kannst du mal die Autos einräumen? Ja. Ja. Oft ist ja ähm, in alten alten Wohnungen, die vielleicht 100 Jahre alt sind, ist ja immer so, dass es am Boden ja. zieht, an die Füße kalt und Babys krabbeln viel. Mhm. Und hier ist an der Decke wie unten warm. Mhm. Also für <laughs> Due to these advantages, the passive house is popular among young families in Germany. Yes. 
Gerok Chilga, an architect, was one of the designers of the Kasix complex. He designed 25 of the 50 houses in the Kasix complex. Dann muss ich natürlich von Anfang an schon im Kopf haben, ähm, wo kommt Lüftung und wo kommt ähm, Abwasser hin. Das sind die zwei Hauptsachen, die durchs ganze Haus gehen. These pipes within the house circulate the air in addition to heating and cooling the rooms. Hier ist unser Technikraum. Das ist die Lüftungsanlage, die ist jetzt im Moment auch in Betrieb. Wir sehen hier, die ist stark wärmegedämmt, damit es kein Kondensat von der warmen Raumluft am kalten Rohr gibt, wenn die jetzt im, im, jetzt im Winter eben kalte Luft reinbringt. Hier sind dann die zwei Rohre, die die Luft versorgen im Haus. Das ist die Zuluft, die alle Räume versorgt mit ähm, frischer Luft. The passive house must be well insulated to be energy efficient. So the air circulation system is the most important component of the house. Also es ist besonders gut gedämmt. Und wir ähm, haben hier eigentlich fast nur aus Holz. Also das ganze Gerüst hier ist aus Holz. Selbst hier ähm, nur ganz unten in der Kellerfußboden ist kein Holz. Sonst ist hier so ziemlich alles Holz. Germany's passive house is made with special wood that prevents energy loss, reducing its energy use by 10% compared to an ordinary home. Das heißt zum Beispiel, Korea hat keine eigenen ähm, Ölvorkommen und da ist natürlich dann auch die Möglichkeit, dass man unabhängig vom Öl wird. Die Prognose ist, dass wir in den nächsten fünf Jahren äh, mindestens 35% aller Häuser in Passivhausstandard bauen werden. Germans are using energy-efficient methods to make smarter homes. Europeans have taken a different approach to designing homes that will produce energy instead of consuming it. Poor in resources, Germany has taken steps to prepare for a future of dwindling energy supplies. Ja, wenn ich wenn ich wenn ich das wenn ich die wenn ich die Energie nicht in, in die Luft blase, dann hat es natürlich für die Umwelt was zu tun. Und wir müssen uns auch um die Umwelt kümmern. Wir, wir zerstören unsere eigene Zukunft, die Zukunft unserer Kinder. Climate change and environmental disasters are the issues the world faces today. Nations are taking measures to reduce greenhouse gases. The Yonpung Moon is one example of the administration's commitment to a green building policy. Yonpung Moon is where visitors to the Blue House are received. The place was renovated in February 2009 for the first time in 40 years to be an eco-friendly building. It was designed to be cooled and heated using geothermal energy. Solar panels were installed on the roof. They power some of the indoor lights. The total renovation cost came to $5.1 million and 434,000 was spent on renewable energy sources alone. The changes at Yongpung Moon provide a glimpse into the administration's initiative for renewable energy and eco-friendly buildings. 
In the city, people spend 90% of their time in buildings. But are we aware of how energy efficient these buildings are? The apartment with the highest energy efficiency in Korea only meets the grade 2 energy efficient level. This apartment won the gold prize in an energy efficient award ceremony in 2008. It uses 23% less energy than a typical apartment. Then, what kind of distinguishing features does this apartment have? The cafeteria within the apartment complex houses many facilities. It's a popular place among the residents. The extensive use of glass isn't just for design. The underground parking lot has an entrance with a glass roof. The sides of the enclosed parking lot let light in to reduce electricity costs. Furthermore, there are solar panels on all the lampposts. During the day, the solar panels charge batteries that will power the lamps at night. The walking lights on the sidewalk use LED lights, which consume far less electricity. All the electricity used to power the shared spaces in the apartment run on natural energy. The apartment boasts another eco-friendly system. Most rainwater either seeps into the ground or flows into the sewage system, where it is treated as wastewater. But here, the rainwater is channeled into a storage tank. This underground water tank stores all the rainwater that falls into the catchment facilities located in the apartment complex. The water is filtered once it reaches the water tank. After the rainwater is filtered through these machines, two pipes will pump the water back to the surface. The apartment has a pond and more green spaces than other nearby apartments. Since recycled rainwater is used as the main water supply, the apartment does not incur any additional costs. The advantages of an eco-friendly apartment are apparent as it derives energy from nature with minimal impact. The 
The domestic construction industry began developing new technologies for eco-friendly apartments many years ago. How will our residential spaces change in the future? Dalian construction firm built this rather plain-looking eco 3-liter house in Daetuk Science Park in 2006. As a revolutionary eco-friendly apartment, the 3-liter house uses 90% less energy than a typical apartment. The heat insulation materials in the house sustainably reduce heating and cooling costs. High-performance windows and insulation materials are used to trap heat within the home. Even the exterior walls of the building are covered with solar panels that produce 30 kilowatts of electricity. Additionally, three wind power generators produce an extra 900 watts of electricity. Geothermal energy is tapped from 150 meters underground to heat and cool the homes. A homeowner can even adjust the room temperature through a computer system. The system also gives homeowners information on how much carbon dioxide they are emitting. Using less fossil fuel, the 3-liter house reduces carbon emissions by 70% compared to a typical apartment. The movement to build homes that produce energy instead of consuming it has begun. These homes provide people with pleasant and airy living spaces and keep the city free of pollution. It's the dawn of a new age for the construction industry. At the research center of S Trading Firm, researchers have been developing new techniques to bring a paradigm shift to the way we construct buildings. There are 50 researchers working on green technologies here. Since a green building requires a wide range of technologies besides renewable energy, the firm works in partnership with many companies. S trading firm entered the green building sector in 2008 after setting up a research center to develop green technologies. The company established a center to research alternative energy sources and made a hefty investment in R&D because it is aware that building green buildings will give it a competitive advantage. Their Green Tomorrow building is a culmination of years of research, and it received Platinum LEED certification from the U.S. Green Building Council. The building was opened to the public in November 2009 and has been attracting many visitors.
There are 63 new technologies featured in this building and the place lets you see the home of the future. But there are many more innovative features. You can turn off all the home appliances with just the press of a button. Almost every appliance in Green Tomorrow is an electronic or computer device. This may give you the impression that electricity use will be higher, but the home produces its own electricity. Green Tomorrow 같은 경우에는 집 전체 뭐 조명이라든지 전열이라든지 냉장고라든지 집에서 사용하는 모든 에너지를 제로로 하는 그런 개념으로 돼 있습니다. The solar energy generating system covers the entire roof of the building. While wind power generators outside the home provide enough energy to power all the home appliances. There's even enough electricity left to charge an electric car. This renewable energy system can heat and cool the home, heat the water, and meet all energy demands. Geothermal energy is drawn from underground to heat and cool the water. More than 90% of the technologies used in Green Tomorrow are commercially available, and the house represents a model for a sustainable future. Our living spaces are changing. We aspire to create a better future for ourselves. And the path we must choose is sustainable development, through which humans can live with nature. What we can do right now for the sake of the planet and also for our own well-being is sort of link you know, the idea that we are part of our environment together.